Welcome to Across Africa, our weekly look at stories from across the continent. I'm Georgia Calvin-Smith, and this week, legends of the Ivorian music genre of Zouglou kick up a storm with their latest album. Yode and Siro's Heritage takes a pop at President Alassane Ouattara during a tense election year. Also, a traditional Rwandan hairstyle's making a comeback. The Amasunzu was once often worn by men and unmarried women. The cut was an elaborate status symbol that's increasingly being sported by contemporary young people. And weird and wonderful, the bones of one of the oddest dinosaurs ever discovered have been excavated in Morocco. The Spinosaurus was the first known swimming predator of its kind, and researchers say it changes our understanding of how and where giants of its time lived. But first, the latest songs of some of the top icons of the Ivorian genre of Zouglou have proved to be controversial. Yode and Siro's latest album release calls out President Alassane Ouattara in a particularly tense election year. Our correspondents report. Romy Ventron. Maman Bibi, la baronne. Yeah, baby, you're Yode and Siro are back with their new album, Heritage. The duo have returned to their Zouglou roots, releasing an urban Ivorian sound that has caused a sensation on the streets of Abidjan. One track in particular has caught the public's attention. President, what are you saying? Social inequality, political prisoners, ethnic discrimination. The song is an eviscerating critique of Ivorian president Alassane Ouattara. It has even attracted attention and criticism from the government itself. The artists have denied being partisan. Sauf s'ils ont la mémoire courte, nous avons critiqué tous les régimes. Voilà. Et c'est comme ça, à chaque fois qu'on critique un régime, les partisans de ce régime eh, se mettent à jaser, mais ils vont finir par se calmer. Zouglou music emerged in the 90s, born out of student counterculture. Like reggae, it is an inherently political genre. La polémique n'a pas lieu d'être. C'est l'ADN, l'essence même du Zouglou. Dans l'ensemble, le Zouglou a toujours eu un titre. Et chaque année, et tous les groupes Zouglou ont toujours un titre qui pique euh, là où ça fait mal. Whether the criticisms mounted by Yodé and Siro are justified or not, many Ivorians believe that it's important that artists have the right to speak out. Young Rwandans wanting to appear to be a cut above the rest are returning to their roots. The traditional Amasunzu is becoming increasingly popular. Once often sported by young men, it became a more rare sight after colonization, but that's set to change. Our team reports from Kigali. In this upmarket salon in Kigali, young Rwandan artists are rediscovering a hairstyle their ancestors wore. Didier, a hairdresser, grew up seeing images of the Amasunzu. Didier's customers are prepared to pay two to three times more than the normal price for this haircut. It has become popular amongst young artists who want to showcase their Rwandan roots. Seliman is a painter. He portrays traditional symbols in his artwork and now also through his hairstyle. I want the people who see my artwork and myself remember our history our own creations we invented in our traditional. That's why I wear Masonzo. The haircut was worn as a sign of prestige by warriors, the wealthy, and young girls. It gradually disappeared after colonization in the 19th century. Masonzo had disappeared by the influence of the culture, étranger. But now the culture rwandaise commence à ressurgir et à s'imposer face au reste du monde. Moi, j'apprécie beaucoup les jeunes qui portent Amasonzo, puisque ce sont eux qui sont les gardiens de la culture rwandaise. Even though the hairstyle is not as popular today, those who wear it say they are proud of getting in touch with their cultural roots. 
South Africa has one of the highest coronavirus infection rates in the world. Although mortality rates do still remain relatively low, communities are still under lockdown there have been having to come up with new ways to get by. With so many stuck at home, food delivery services, especially those tailored to townships, have taken off. Our team reports. It all started in this restaurant, one of Leon's absolute favourites. Since 2015, this young entrepreneur has been developing an app, Order Kazi. Its popularity has exploded during lockdown, with local restaurants able to deliver food to their clients all over Cape Town, including in the townships, where other food delivery services often refuse to go. I looked into why isn't there such a, a service? So things like safety um, and teaching the market about such a service. So all of that, um, we found solutions to it. We shouldn't have really focused so much on the app because I realized later that the app isn't the business. The business is us bringing the food to people's doorstep. And not just any old food. Order Kazi delivers traditional dishes made in township kitchens, like tripe, a favorite of Nelson Mandela, or this special breed of tough chicken. It's organic free range chicken, like, but like it's organic chicken, hard body. The app features 15 of these traditional kitchens. The restaurant owners are delighted at its success, particularly during this time of crisis. Uh, people are not working, so uh, we used to have this place full uh, for lunchtime, but now, as you can see, I don't have uh, people over. Uh, with the delivery, we still are able to open and operate the business. Restaurant staff and drivers have been given a lifeline by Order Kazi, which delivers in a 50 kilometer radius. Encouraged by its newfound popularity, the startup plans to expand to Johannesburg by the end of the year. A group of Congolese activists are trying to reshape the country's perspectives on traditional gender roles. A new campaign has been highlighting the damage done by limiting ideas about what is women's work and what is or is not masculine. Our team has more. For Lumia, it's a special moment with his little girl. This kind of playful father-daughter bonding isn't common in the DRC. Unlike many Congolese men, Lumia thinks it's not just up to women to take care of children. Lumia and his wife Cynthia share all the household chores, from cleaning and buying groceries to cooking. But other people's reactions aren't always easy to deal with. On nous dit vous êtes des homosexuels, vous voulez que les hommes deviennent des minimes. Donc en quelque sorte, on est en train d'insinuer que les femmes sont des minimes, sont des petits, sont des rien. Et cette conception là malheureusement, elle est dans beaucoup beaucoup d'hommes. A bloggers collective called Habari is trying to change traditional perceptions about gender roles. A new campaign called Vraiment Mobali or Real Man in Lingala is aimed at raising awareness about sexism. The drive shares information on social networks and in face-to-face -face weekly workshops. So far, most men have eventually become receptive to change, but many first struggle to challenge their views. Est-ce que vous avez dans votre message, dans votre contenu, tenu compte du fait que il faudrait essayer d'encadrer la femme, que la femme ne prenne pas le fait de l'homme d'être vrai mobile pour un acquis et rester dans sa zone de confort et puis ne plus rien faire. Organizers are trying to deconstruct stereotypes about manhood and develop an understanding of positive masculinity. Notre culture congolaise nous a incarné certains comportements qui ne sont pas vraiment des bons comportements. On ne perd pas notre masculinité en aidant la femme. On ne perd pas notre masculinité en promouvant la femme. Habari wants these values taught from an early age and has asked the Ministry of Education to include gender equality in the school curriculum. The first known swimming dinosaur could rewrite our understanding of how and where the giants lived. The Spinosaurus, discovered in Morocco, was a seven-ton, 50-foot-long predator that appeared to have been unexpectedly comfortable in deep waters. Our correspondents have more. He spent 30 years accumulating prehistoric treasures for the Faculty of Sciences of Casablanca. And this is Professor Sami Zuri's greatest find. 
dug up on the vast rocky plateau of Kem Kem in southeast Morocco. The remains of a Spinosaurus. Until now considered by the scientific world to be a terrestrial reptile, the paleontologist and an international team of researchers have found evidence that this great Cretaceous predator hunted in water and lived a semi-aquatic life. Est un organe un peu spécial euh, qui est différent d'une queue d'animal terrestre et qui ressemble plutôt à une nageoire, à un caudal, donc qui est capable d'ondulation latérale qui permet et de, à cet animal de se propulser dans l'eau. This major discovery demonstrated that Morocco has a rich prehistoric heritage, to the point of being considered a paleontologist paradise. In Sous Massa, Anza Beach still carries the traces of history. On attribue cette empreinte à ce dinosaure là, qui s'appelle Therizinosaur, Therizinosaurus. Si on revient à 85 millions d'années en arrière, ici, à Anza, il y avait une plage sur lequel se baladaient des dinosaures carnivores de type théropode. Et ce sont ces dinosaures qui ont laissé plus de 400 empreintes qu'on trouve aujourd'hui, qu'on peut voir aujourd'hui. Morocco is littered with artifacts like dinosaur bones, footprints and early human remains, but there are few resources for research and to stop fossil trafficking. Le Maroc est très riche, c'est un grand musée et si on, on, on laisse ces objets partir, à un certain moment, il ne restera plus rien. Et donc cette richesse que tout le monde vient chercher, il est prisé, va disparaître et finalement l'intérêt pour le Maroc va disparaître. Scientists are unanimous. Awareness is necessary to preserve this exceptional heritage. Well, that's it for Across Africa for now. Thanks for joining us and do so again if you can. Take care.